What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from D&D TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of y'all who will, all that information is in the description box below. Also, go over to my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speak TV. Make sure you subscribe over there. And again, I got to give a special shout out to everybody who's donated. You all have been showing up and showing out, and I appreciate that so much. Now, let's get into the story. All right, y'all. Thanks for clicking on the video. Hope everyone is doing well. Now, this video is for educational purposes, and as I approach these stories with respect, I want you all to please, please, please be respectful in the comment section. Thanks. All right, y'all. Now, this story comes out of New York. You know, the last story we did was in New York, and this one comes out of New York as well. Let's get into it. A New York pastor is currently out of a job. Reverend Marcus Jackson, who's the pastor at Hope Memorial Community Church in Syracuse, New York, is also a level two registered sex offender. Take a breath. Now, according to the local news reporter at the Syracuse news station, they said that level three offenders are considered the most dangerous. Look, all of it's dangerous. Level one, level two, all, three, all of it's dangerous to me. The New York State's Division of Criminal Justice, they list Pastor Marcus Jackson as a level two sex offender and states that he was convicted in 2000 for crimes committed in 1998. There's a picture of him how he looked when he was younger in 1998, around about 2000. Now, Pastor Marcus Jackson, his victims were 15 and 16 year old boys. Take a breath. I told you, they hide out in the church. They all hide out in the church. Some of these churches don't care about the chilling. Y'all just put all of these type of people around the children. You don't care. And then you get mad at the vloggers when we... Let me go on. Pastor Jackson worked at a non-for-profit organization called Vera House. Now, Vera House helps survivors of domestic and sexual abuse. Oh, my God. When Pastor Jackson was profiled on the local news for his work at Vera House, after he made that appearance on the local news, some people in the community contacted the news station to let them know that Pastor Jackson should not be working in that capacity at Vera's house, being that he is a level two registered sex offender in the state of New York. So the local news station did their own investigation and they went to Vera House and they talked to the executive director. The executive director said that they knew about Pastor Marcus Jackson's background and that he was honest about his past to the hiring manager. The staff told the news reporter that it happened 20 years ago and that Pastor Jackson did not work with anyone under the age of 18 and that if he had any contact with minors, it was through his volunteer capacity with the clergy emergency response team. Now, Vera House also heard concerns from the community about Pastor Jackson working at their program, so they decided to go ahead and terminate Pastor Jackson's employment. Now you're going to do damage control? Pastor Marcus Jackson was employed with Vera House from 2020 up until August 1st of 2022. Now, I know there are those in religious institutions as well as open society. We all have our different beliefs when it comes to this. There are those of you who believe that if a person asks for forgiveness, they should be forgiven, especially if they served their time and paid their debt to society. They should be able to go on in with their life and be able to work and all that stuff. And then there are some of you who feel that if somebody commits a horrible, heinous act against a child, especially sexual abuse, that they should never be trusted again. Point in case, they have to register as a sex offender for life. Now, we're going to get into this. Now, I'm going to let you all watch this video, and I'll be back with the rest of my commentary. And you all know me. I'm Dawson, and I won't hold back. Breaking news tonight, a Central New York nonprofit that helps survivors of domestic and sexual abuse hired and employed a registered sex offender for the past two years. New tonight, Vera House in Syracuse is responding to community concerns brought to the attention of NBC3. This is the man in question, Marcus Jackson. Vera House tells us Jackson was fired last week. In New York, Jackson is a level two registered sex offender. Level three offenders are the most dangerous. He was convicted of unlawful sexual activity with 15 and 16 year old boys. Just last month, we profiled Jackson and his role with Vera House. As spiritual leaders, right, we feel that we need to be present for our people in non-traditional ways. We may not have all the answers, but sometimes folk don't want you to say anything, they just need someone to listen. 
Jackson, who is also a pastor, was part of the clergy emergency response team in Syracuse, too. He and others would be some of the first people on scene after violence in the city of Syracuse, often families of young victims of gun violence. Vera House hired Jackson in October of 2020. Investigative reporter Mary Keeler went to the co-executive director of Vera House to ask why. Mary? Megan, tonight the organization's leaders tell me they knew about Jackson's criminal history before they hired him. And just hours ago, I went to Vera House to ask them why they would knowingly hire a registered sex offender for a role that has him dealing directly with victims of sexual and domestic violence. From October 2020 until the first of this month, Marcus Jackson worked at Vera House. Did he approach Vera House? Did Vera House approach him? And then what was the, the vetting process? Marcus applied for a position to be an advocate here at Vera House. So he came to us in the applicant pool that we had at that period of time. Co-executive director Randy Bregman says Jackson was honest about his criminal past to hiring managers. The state's Division of Criminal Justice lists Jackson as a level two sex offender. It states he was convicted in 2000 for crimes committed in 1998. His victims were 15 and 16 year old boys. When did you yourself learn that he is a registered sex offender. Our hiring managers were very interested in bringing him on to Vera House, but recognized that there was the sex offense history. They didn't have that experience in the past, so they came and asked if there would be a reason that we could not hire him. So we did a little bit of research and found that there were some positions that we wouldn't be able to hire him for. Um, and we knew that we didn't want him working with people who were underage. Was that at all concerning to you? No, I think what was concerning to us would be if we did a background check and something came back that was more recent or that he hadn't told us about. Despite Jackson telling us last month his role impacted the lives of young people, Bregman claims the victims he worked with were all over 18 and that any contact with minors was in his volunteer capacity with the clergy emergency response team. The victims he worked with at Vera House were dealing with trauma after sexual, domestic, and other types of abuse. We believe in the capacity for people to change and we hold values simultaneously, which I think is often hard for people to do. We value the safety of all victims and survivors and potential victims. At the same time, we value the humanity of everyone, including somebody who may have committed harm. And in response to people can change, how do you juxtapose that advice to advice you would give a victim who is escaping or trying to escape a cycle of abuse? Actually, it might surprise you to hear, Mary, but I wouldn't advise somebody that people can never change. Our story on July 15th led to a viewer calling us Monday very concerned about Jackson's role with Vera House given his sex offender status. Vera House heard concerns too after that story and decided to terminate his employment. Bregman says there's no policy at Vera House that prevents sex offenders from getting hired. You stand by Vera House's decision ultimately to hire Marcus Jackson. I do, and I, I think that we would make a similar decision again if somebody came to us, acknowledged a 20-year-old sex offense. There are still the optics of it, especially in this very sensitive line of work. I appreciate that, and I will say Vera House tries not to make decisions based on optics, but we try and make decisions based on our values. All right, y'all, let's go in. But you know what? I'm going to let you all finish the commentary on this today. I want you all to get down in the comments and let me know what you all think of this video. But I have some questions I want you all to answer. Do you believe that a sex offender can change? A person that's committed this kind of act towards children, do you believe that they can change? And also, do you agree with Vera House, their decision to hire people like Pastor Marcus Jackson? And then another question, would you... Uh, you know, go to a church. This man is a pastor where a pastor is a registered sex offender. Would you allow your children to be in that church? I want to know you all get down in the comments. Let me know what you think about this video until next time. It's your guy Dawson. Take care of yourself and each other. Peace. Oh, and another thing. I know y'all say, Dawson, I thought you were going to let us finish the commentary. Here you go speaking. Yeah, Dawson speak. Yeah, I'm gonna let y'all finish. Hold up. Let me say this one thing though.
Now, I've said this in many videos, and I'll continue to say it. We have so many programs for the girls and protect the girls and girl power and all this kind of stuff and self-esteem classes for the girls, and that's good, and it's needed, and it needs to continue. But I tell you parents, you guardians all the time, look out for your boys, your young boys, the teenagers. This pastor, he's still a pastor now, was charged over 20 years ago. For violating 15 and 16 year old boys. Y'all, y'all got to wake up. You got to wake up. Now I'm out of here for real, y'all. Go down, get in the comments, finish the commentary for me. Peace.